past one month i have been researching about authentication system and everything that we can do in authentication system basically i wanted to create my own earth library and i also wanted to create something really secure for my own project and because of that i stumbled upon uh, different authentication system but first of all i wanted to try out creating my own auth system and because of that i researched about authentication system for like past one month uh, here and there and throughout this process i learned a lot of things and i just wanted to summarize everything that i learned about wave authentication system uh, because what's really interesting about it was there are there is no one best solution there are so many solution and it's just about what is best for your project and that's why it was necessary to understand everything and also there is no one secure way or one best way so i'm going to just go over uh, and i just wanted to share with you everything i learned and the, draw the conclusion of what's best what might not be the best what are the standards what are the osap standards what are the security policy that you should follow and everything so let's get started so first of all the first thing that you need to understand about web authentication is tokens and there are two ways basically uh, the most popular ones is json web token which is used by google and the second is our traditional way of session tokens like this so the key thing here to understand is that it's not one is it's not that one is better than another like you can see that it, uh, a lot of articles about why JWT is better or session is better but it seems that nothing is better or worse it just depends on what kind of situation you would want to use something because to be very honest after the all the extensive research that I have done I have found out that nothing is better and is nothing like nothing is secure either because it's just about more about how you are going to implement it and also about there are so many things that I will just cover up one after another but let's get uh, let's get uh, into two of these so first is JSON web token and session token right so what JSON web token actually is is basically a token with three things right like this so the first thing will be header right so the first thing will be header which will just be what kind of algorithm we're going to use to encrypt our data second thing is payload payload is basically a json object with all the key and value pairs suppose name user id of your user or something like that and signature is just a random secret key that you you want to use and you you want your server to claim it right so this is a secret key or signature in our json web token so we have header payload and signature now since we have a signature what happened in json web token is a user is going to send the access token right but before that obviously user first log into their page to our uh, server with login email and password then this is our server uh, this server is actually going to uh, give us give the user their authentication token or access token and user going to, is going to save the access token now what happens is whenever the user make any request to the api or any other resources then it's going to send that token to our server right so what the server is going to do is inside our server in our probably in our env file what we have is our secret key right so in our env file we have secret key which is our signature so we are going to get the access token from here from the whenever the user uh, make a request they have to pass the access token with the request and our server is going to get the access token there in our header or in our cookies or in body or wherever right and we have our secret key the signature key in our environment variable so now the uh, server what it can do is it can just match our signature and just verify whether our token is valid or not right and in that way we can verify that the token is valid right and now in terms of session tokens what happen is there is no json web token of this header payload or everything there is nothing like this 
So first thing what happened is user is going to send a request with login request with email and password and it's going to create the user it's going to verify that the email and password is correct our server is going to verify all of that and it's going to send uh, the token to the client all right so the client will save the token but also server will also save a token in some kind of uh, session storage or uh, in server session or some kind of database like redis database which is basically used for saving tokens or like cache database right so it might save it inside the redis database so what happens is whenever users send the request api request or any other request to our server it is going to send that token in cookie right that's why it is also sometimes referred as a uh, session token is also sometimes referred as a cookie token but obviously session is not equal to cookie cookie and session are completely different thing this is the most confusing thing that i find out when i was researching because sometimes it was saying session and cookie and it was so confusing but main thing to understand is that session is not a cookie cookie is not a session but sometimes session token are sometimes called cookie token because uh, they are mostly sent in cookie when we request to our make a request to our server so we make request to our server server has also stored the token in our database so server will go to the database and check that if the token is same or not and if it is equal to the same equals to uh, the the token that is sent to from the client is equal to the token that we have in a the server then obviously you are a valid and authenticated user right and that's how basically how the session token works it just involves this process of saving it inside the database or some cache database uh, and verifying it by doing equals to whatever is sent is equals to whatever is in the server or in some kind of shared cache that's how session works but here we have the signature and signature signature does uh, does all the validation process so the important thing here to notice uh, is that in our json web token we are not storing any access token right in our server we don't have access token because we don't need to do these equals to thing right we can directly very verify our token from our secret key which is our in our environment file and because of that we don't have to save this access token which is provided in our server there is no need to do that because just like in session token we have to do this equal to to verify whether the token sent from the client is equal to the token inside the server so we need to save it inside a server and do the verify check here but here we don't need to do that in json web token because obviously we have not uh, saving the token in server we are just uh, verifying the token based on the secret key or the signature and because of that the json web token are stateless right so state stat uh, e and l right and this is because of this the session web token is stateless whereas the session token is state full right because we are saving some kind of access token or uh, the token value inside our server or inside some kind of shared cache right and now another important thing to understand here is that since session token web token is stored in client now we have three options to store inside our client because we don't store it in server here we store it in both server and in client and in session to session token are mostly shared inside a cookie stored inside a cookie always so now in terms of json web token we don't store the token in server at all right we don't store the token in server it's just uh, stored in our web browser or client client basically means web browser so now we have to save our token in some secure place right so the option we have is first option is in memory right i'll just write text here so the first option is in memory right uh, so in memory basically means uh, if you are creating in inside javascript or your react pro project then probably your state is like in memory right because there is some variable which contains some data so that is really secure but the problem is that if you refresh the page your state will just disappear and you will lose your access token so that you have to log in again so if you really need access token very for very short period of time 
like kind of temporary amount of time and it's not important throughout your project and if it really doesn't matter if you just refresh the page then you can save it inside in, in memory right and in memory is the most secure one to store in, in our page so another option that we have is local storage so i'll just say control v and say local storage so local storage uh, will solve the problem of refresh right so even if you refresh the page second time you come to the same page then local storage will still have this have that token and you can send that token to the server in your payload or uh, in your body or in even in your header or somewhere and it will work fine right but the problem with local storage is it is vulnerable to xss attack so what xss attack basically means is that whenever someone is going can inject some kind of javascript to your, our website then they can just say local storage dot get item and they can do anything with our access token so it is a very bad solution i would just say that local storage is a bad place to store your access token because it is really vulnerable right so now what is the good solution so i think the really good solution right now is actually a cookie right so cookie is really good solution to store our access token in our client and not only cookie cookie in itself is not a good solution but cookie provide many security features and some of them are like http only right so we can just give a cookie the property of http only and what it does is that if you if we do http only in a cookie then our client side javascript will never be able to access our access token our data token and because of that it will be really secure and we will not be vulnerable to access as attacks because any javascript code cannot access this cookie second thing we do can do to prevent cross site resource forgery csr attacks is to give same side property right so what we can do is we can just say same site like this and same site can take three values and some of those values are lex and strict and none right so if someone is trying to do cross site resource forgery right these are these are all the options that we can use in use for same site right so what happens is that if someone try to uh, present uh, make a um, csr attack in our website and if we do same site strict then it, it means that the cookie that will be sent to re in, re in the request to our server or our api will only be sent if both of them are in same domain right so let's say you have your uh, website in xyz.com and if you have your api in uh, xyz.com slash api or api.xyz.com like as in subdomain right then only the cookie will be passed so any other website let's say attacker or hacker.com website is trying to pass the cookie to our server then that will not be allowed and that's just what same side strict does now uh, basically if you make it strict then no other uh, website attacker website can actually initiate the request to our server with our cookie so if we use same site to lax or strict then it's going to protect it from csrf attacks so what lax does is it's not going to allow a cookie but it will only allow cookie from other people website or other domain if it is a get request and also if it is a top level navigation basically top level top level navigation means that we are navigating it from the top level of browser url so that then only it will send the cookie to with the request otherwise it will not send the cookie from any other site except our own site right so strict means never send it lax means never send it but only send it in case where it is get request and the request is made from the top of the url not from within the app but from the top of the url suppose an anchor tag right if user click an anchor tag it will go to the top url of a browser if it is get request then you can share or use our cookie so in this way it is really secure to do it 
like this now let's talk about another problem between json web token and session and the problem is now related to scalability right so how which one is really easy to scale and which one is not really that great in uh, in scaling or anything and now this is interesting so again what we learned about json web token was the token contain three things right a header i'll just say h and then a payload i'll just say p and another is signature which is basically a sig uh, secret key which will be signed both by client and browser or server and server can just use this secret key to verify our availability which is why we don't have to save our access token in our server and which makes it stateless right now the thing here is our payload what our payload contain is like name let's say right uh it's really difficult to type it like this i'll just go out here and type it like here i'll just say name uh, x y z right and also like um, id 5 right this is number let's say uh i will just say yeah just just these two data inside our payload right so our payload contains these two data the thing here is we can see that our payload actually directly contain the data instead of anything else right so the this uh, i don't know why i can just move it right now okay like this let's put it right here okay so you, uh, i don't know why i can't remove this thing okay maybe i'm not using a selector i'll just select it okay now like this okay so you can see here in our payload we have name and id by itself right so we can store value inside our jwt or json web token so basically what it means is jwt is actually token by value right so our jwt is actually a token by value whereas our in our session token what happens is we don't have all of these things basically we have a cookie id in our uh, cookie so i'll just say cookie id inside our cookie obviously and it will also be stored in the server so this will be in client and inside our server right so we have not cookie id i think it's just session id so we have session id both in our client and our server and because of that it since it just contain id which means that it doesn't contain any value like the payload here and just because of that it is called token by reference like this okay so basically since it contains the value itself it is called token by value but it doesn't contain any value it just contains the token and session id so it is called token by reference so let's see how it affect our scaling the scaling of our project whenever we scale it right so let's say we have a user browser like this so we have a browser here okay so this is a distorted computer <laughs> and let's say here we have a load balancer in our project right so this load balancer point to different servers in different country let's say so this is called server one uh, this is called server two and this is called the third right i'll just copy it and it's the same thing here where are my servers uh so this server three this will be server two and this will be server one okay so the browser will send cookie it's 
so difficult to write it like this i'll just type text it here so the browser send cookie id right which basically contain uh basically contain session id here inside cookie all right so whenever we send a request to our server the browser is going to send the cookie id uh, which will be so browser will send the cookie and the cookie will contain the session id right so now the session has to be also be stored in server obviously so there will be session here as well let's say the session id is uh, a20 just a normal text right so let's say the session id is a20 so server will also have a20 here so let's say it's server 3 a20 like this right so now the problem here is if our load balancer is going to send the next next request to our server one then it does not have any idea about a20 right so let's say user make our login and we have created the session here and we have sent the uh, session id to the cookie inside a10 as well inside our cookie as well so now when the user make a request now they are going to have this session id inside their cookie they will go up to our server and if luckily if they come to s3 then obviously s3 will contain this a20 reference so it will say that okay it is a valid user it will send back the response right but let's say user again come back with the same session id in a cookie of a20 and go to s2 or s1 now s2 or s1 doesn't have that reference right and just because of that the authentication will fail and they have to log in again so this is really problem with horizontal scaling so when we are horizontal scaling since it doesn't contain the value itself and we have to store this cookie token or session id inside our server and just because of that we cannot scale it horizontally so the solution would be to not store it inside this s3 server but inside this redis cache or database like redis database or redis cache database we can put a3 here a20 here sorry so we can just put a20 here so when user make a request to s3 it will save the session id inside this redis and whenever this request is sent to server 2 it will also point to the same uh, redis database distributed cache and s3 it will s1 also will point to the same uh, redis data cache right so it will be a distributed data cache now the system will start becoming really complex so because of the fact that we have to send response uh we have to uh, store the session id both in client and in server it becomes really difficult to actually scale it horizontally right and also it's because the session is by reference so we cannot contain uh, it cannot contain value itself so it will just has to match these two uh, session id or session token and that's why it has to be saved inside the server but if you save it inside just s3 server then s1 and s2 will not get it and just because of that we have to now store it inside some kind of cache database distributed cache database like redis like redis okay so this is the first time i am able to write it <laughs> perfectly right so we have to save it inside redis and all of those servers will point to redis to check whether the authentication token is actually inside the database or not and if there is then you are a valid user otherwise you are not a valid user right and just because of this whole thing it becomes really complex to manage this and it is really harder to scale it horizontally now let's come back to here so this whole to web token is actually by value right so we have our cookie and our cookie http only cookie right and the cookie will contain this access token right access token so the access token will have obviously header payload and signature right every server will have that signature or secret key inside its env file now because the access token of the jw token is always verified using signature right and we have signature inside all of this env file here we don't have to store this access token in our server at all right because it's uh, it's going to verify it using the signature but all the server here has the capacity to make the jwt verify right so we can just say so every server can actually easily do jwt dot verify right okay. so all of the server all the three servers can actually make 
the JWT verify request so this also can do that this all uh, this also can do it and this server also can verify it without actually became being dependent on some kind of shared redis cache right because all of this will have this secret key all right so all this server one server two and server three will have this secret key uh, inside their env file and they can just verify the jwd token by using the secret key without having to save, uh, save that access token inside the server itself and just because of that it becomes really easy to scale inside our jwt so whenever we are using json web token it becomes easy to scale it horizontally and that's the benefit of json web token and that's the power of being stateless here because we are not saving anything inside server which is related to token and we are just using that env secret key just to verify the jwt and every server can independently verify the jwt which makes it really easy to scale that's the second thing but the main important question here and another thing that raises the question is is it really that easy right the main problem here is and the big problem about json web token is that like what's the catch right so i thought after all of this research i thought that okay then jwt is a perfectly fine option right because we don't have to manage another database we don't have to save everything inside the server we don't have to manage this distributed redis database or redis cache so that we have to verify our access token every server can do it independently with jwt uh, because every server can easily verify the jwt token using the signature so we don't even have to store anything inside our server so jwt seems like a really good option here right but the actual thing is it might not be that easy and it might it might not be that good of an option and the reason for that is the next question that i'm going to ask you so before that i'm going to remove all of this so this is the last question regarding json web token and session and this it makes everything come back to a balance check all right so up until now json web token seems like a really good option because session in because in session token we have to manage all the server and do everything server related things and manage database make a shared cache system store our access token in our server and store inside our database every uh, create a distributed cache system with redis and everything right but now here the important question that arises is how do we revoke an access token in jwt right so the problem here is about revoking and this is the important question now so let's say our access token is stolen right so some hacker or some a uh, fraud person get our access token right now access token will contain signature which any server will be going to verify it if the signature match right and now it will have expiry time but let's say the, the token is not expired and it is been gathered or collected or stored it has been stolen by some attacker or hacker so there is no way we can revoke right there is no way we can revoke and say that okay this access token is stolen we are going to stop using this uh, access token right so there is no way we can revoke is to uh, revoke the json web token once it is stolen right so attacker so even though we know that okay that is uh, access token is stolen and it is uh someone has stolen the access token we cannot actually do anything to revoke it uh revoke that access token right to not give it any access right and the reason for that is because there is no access token stored inside our server right so we cannot go to server and say that okay this access token was stolen so remove it from the server and make sure that the access token doesn't get any data it doesn't happen all of that by default right wherever whereas in session there is this client client make a request right to our server let's say this is our server now server let's say store some kind of uh, our session id it provides session id uh, in every request from cookie and also our server server is going to save that uh, session id 
inside this Redis database, right? So this is the Redis database, and this S1 is saved inside Redis database. Now let's say this session ID is stolen. So what server can actually do here is it can remove this from their database, right? So from Redis cache, it can remove this session ID because yeah, uh, if they found out that the session id was stolen right so let's say some user complain and say that their access token is stolen then we can say that okay if there if your uh, access token is stolen we are going to just remove your access token from our database cache and now whenever someone use this access token or session id to verify then we will just check out the server okay server doesn't contain it because we already removed it so we can say okay this session token is blacklisted it is not inside our server so now we are revoking your access token which means that you cannot use this token now at all right but the same thing cannot be done in our json web token and the fact is that is because we are not saving anything in our database right if you saw that we are just using our signature which is uh, inside our uh jwt token and which is also inside our server and we're just verifying it using our signature and because of that since we are not storing any token in our server we cannot actually revoke the token right but that also is not completely true because we can it's just that we cannot do that directly right we have to do it by ourselves now let's see how we can actually revoke our token and this is really now this is where it becomes really interesting right so now we know that just because the session or access token are not stored in the server the server cannot revoke it because it cannot delete anything from the server signature has to be there and it's going to verify it until the expiry time is over but if the expiry time is really long then the hacker can use that access token all the time right and that's a really big problem so now how to block hacker uh, from using that access token right if you find out that okay this access token is used by hacker how to revoke it how to make it lose its power now to do that we have to do what we were doing in hessian token in first place right so let's say this is a client okay this is the weird laptop right and it's make a request right with access token inside a cookie which is also has to be uh, http only cookie and we have our server here right so now obviously the jwt is sent from the browser cookie and sent to the server server does not store anything because it is just a web token and everything is already inside the value and server is going to verify it with jwt verification server can verify it using our secret key and it used nothing more right it does not store it inside our server which is the problem because now we cannot revoke this right because user is sending it and if your user is sending it if the, it is stolen and we know that it is stolen now we cannot de-verify it right we cannot say that okay we cannot know that it, it is stolen and we cannot remove anything from the server because it is coming from the client we have to verify it if the signature match it is always going to verify so there is no way we can revoke it we cannot there is no way we can say that okay this is a stolen this is a stolen token and we have to remove it there is no way we can remove it but how we can remove it is actually by creating a blacklist right so we are going to create a blacklist of token right so what we are going to do is we are going to create a blacklist of database right so this is also going to be a redis database let's say because it is also has to be a cache database which will be used by distributor system by all the servers and we're going to save this if we know that this access token is stolen we can say that okay user just if user log out or in any case we can just say that we can save this access token in our redis server right so we're going to save that stolen token in our redis server so whenever user requests that access token the server is going to check if our access token is inside a blacklist or not and if we say that okay it is inside blacklist then we are not going to give the user the access to our resources or api resources right so we're going to send unauthorized or you are blacklisted or something like that so now the thing here is this is exactly what we did in our session right because the only difference between session and uh, and the JWT token actually was that we don't have to use this database in first place, right? But if you think about it, access token is going to come, it is going to very check if it is in blacklist or not every time, and then we are just 
doing the same session token thing again here in JWT while revoking it. So that's the conclusion I came into. It seems like like this authentication system it was all these things and then at the end of the day you end up doing the same thing. <laughs> but it was really interesting to know about all of this, right? So the best solution is there is no best solution here. It's just about what you want to use when you have to think about the scaling, the terms of scaling and everything. But I think general uh, what general recommended way is that if you want to make server to server communication, then use JWT. If you want to use API uh, authentication system for API, use JWT, JWT key, right? Or, or use JWT authentication system. But if you want to create it for user client authentication system, right? So user uh, behavior or how user interact to a server, then use this session token, right? So for normal users, you should be using session token. It is recommended. But if it for if it is for API or any other server to server communication, then JWT is the best option. But you can use any option. Uh, basically, there is nothing wrong, nothing bad, nothing good. It's just good to know both of it, and you can use whatever you want, right? So basically, again, I'll just summarize everything. JWT is stateless. Session is stateful. JWT does not store access token in its server, and Session stores its access token in server. JWT verify it using the secret key and uh, the signature that we provide in our token and in our environment variables where the session tokens are verified uh, by checking that whether the uh, token coming from the cookie is equal to the token saved in server or not just because uh, that access token sorry session token are saved inside server we can revoke it by just deleting it from the server but since jwt token are not saved inside a server we cannot actually revoke it directly or easily so for that we have to save the stolen token when we know that it is a stolen token we can save it inside our blacklist inside our database or a server and then when it uh, whenever user make a request we can check to the database if it is included inside a blacklist and if it is then we are going to return it back and if it is not included inside a blacklist then we can say that okay this is the valid token and you can do whatever you want to now right and but the problem is if we are doing that then why just we why just we just don't do this directly right because that's the whole point here we have to use database and manage all the database for the token and here we don't have to manage the database for the token but if you really want to revoke the token when it is stolen then we do have to do use the database which basically means that we are going back and doing the same thing but both of them are really good solution depends on what you are trying to lose or learn or what you're trying to use in your project and also i think it's really important to learn both of it so the thing is my conclusion after all this research is that if i have to do authentication user authentication system i will go with this if i'm creating api and creating a, a, a authentication system for my api i will go with this and if it is server to server communication i will go with this if it is from client to server communication i will go with this so that's the conclusion that i wanted to share about fun stuff really interesting i enjoyed it just scratched my head a lot of time because it's so confusing but yeah there we go but also very important to remember always save your token inside cookie that is http only has same site strict or lax and also secure option to true to make it secure in our client side so that we don't have to so that it cannot be used to so that we can basically protect it from xss and csrf attacks and that's the best thing just make sure that you are storing your cookie or your token inside http only cookie right always store your token in http only cookie with same site to strict or lax and secure to true so that it is really secure in your web browser and no one can steal it from you yeah so that's the conclusion thank you i hope you like it if you did please hit like and subscribe thank you